Hello everyone and welcome back to my attempts to assemble the International Space Station in Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin with the Zvezda launch on a Proton-K rocket. This is the second Russian module. We've launched the Zarya module and attached Unity to it using a space shuttle. And we used Canadarm properly this time. But that was basically the easy part and things get harder from here. This is all done during live streams on Twitch. And of course this rocket launch is being controlled by KOS, otherwise I would have the UI up. Uh, there we have hot staging on the second stage and separation of the first stage. Forgive the camera, I was just uh, trying out various camera angles as I do. Uh, and there we have the fairing and the Zvezda module. Now in my previous attempt to assemble the International Space Station, one of the inaccuracies if you will, was that I had needed a tug to get Zvezda to the station. I had run out of fuel with it, and so we'll see how it goes here. It is still going to be tight, though with this version of the launch script it does get do a better job of getting the inclination right, but we also have the timing issue for the launch window, and apparently I was a little bit wrong on that, so we have less than a degree off in inclination, but it's still uh, still a uh, substantial amount, considering that the delta V that Zvezda has is less than 200 meters per second. So it's going to be a tight one. Everything deploying here. There's no problem as far as power, and that's good, because Zvezda was supposed to take a while to rendezvous with the station. The real thing took 14 days. It was launched on July 12, 2000, and docked on July 26, 2000. Here we do our main correction burn, and you can see it takes most of our delta-v. The reason for the delta-v limit is because Proton simply couldn't carry more. But anyway, after the main correction burn and then some minor burns, Zvezda had 27, well now 26 meters per second left in order to rendezvous with the International Space Station, approaching within one kilometer here. And I tried to use some of the fuel from Zarya to help out, but the problem with this Vesda module here was that the RCS took a lot of a lot of the delta V. So as you can see, uh, as we match speeds, we only have seven meters per second here, and just turning around takes a lot of delta V. It turns out uh, I might have wanted to tune down the RCS, but by the time I figured that out, it was too late. So perhaps if I had thrust limited the RCS, that would have been a good thing. But you can see four meters per second now. And here with the station controlling from the opposite side, so that's why it's showing a negative delta V there. The problem with the station is that uh, some of the thrusters are not working, and I did not realize that. The backward facing thrusters are not working. So I slow down here, and the fuel margins are really, really tight, but we're really, really close, so it's, it's maddening at this point and here turning the station but I don't have any thrusters to push the station towards Zvezda here and at the same time I don't have enough delta V on the Zvezda side to really send it over to the station at least without risking smashing into the station so rather than risking that I decided to go with the tug again despite the inaccuracy but we were really really close so I didn't feel too bad about it Last time we used a progress tug, but this time, at the suggestion from viewers, I decided to launch a tug on a Delta II rocket instead. Now we can't launch a progress on a Delta II, but we don't need the whole progress. It's got pretty heavy structural mass and all uh, that we don't need. It is a pressurized vehicle after all. So instead we have just the, basically the upper stage of the Delta II rocket, the Delta stage and uh, that stage has a docking adapter and some extra fuel. And so that's all we need. The extra fuel is actually for the Zvezda module itself, so it's not the fuel that the Delta stage uses, which is Aerozine and N204. So the fuel we're carrying as a payload, if you will, is the UDMH and N204. Okay, and other boosters. If you saw the little flames that were wiggling around earlier, those were actually Vernier thrusters. They've got some really weird, powerful flames going out. Probably a little bit too much by way of flame effects there. So this is the Delta stage with the extremely long nozzle on the AJ-10, giving its optimal efficiency. 
and there we have Orbit. So you can see the payload carrying some extra fuel and the docking adapter and controller, of course. And uh, it didn't take too much to rendezvous with the Zvezda module. So here we are uh, preparing to dock. You can see the relative sizes. Just doing a delicate job of it. Plenty of fuel in the Delta stage to make this work out. Uh, even with the huge Zvezda module attached, we've got more than 400 meters per second, which says something, I think. So, here we are, lining up with the station, the back end of the Zarya module. And coming in for a dock here, trying to do our best. These aren't the heaviest modules I've ever moved around. 20 tons is okay, it's not too bad. Um, especially since the RCS is a bit overpowered. Here we go. Still delicate work though. And it turns out that I'm a little bit off. Uh, not on this axis, you can see we're pretty good here. But the roll axis, of course. You can see the solar panels are a little bit askew. Well. Uh, askew enough that uh, there were suggestions to redock, and so I pulled away and I attempted to redock, but I didn't do a particularly good job of it actually. Uh, you'll see me try and correct, line them up. But even though I thought I got them in line, after we actually dock here, they still appear askew. So there we go. It's not quite as bad, but it's still off. Anyway, time to dispose of the tug, of course. While it would have been handy to keep the tug at the station, just in case we needed to do other maneuvers, because it still had some Delta V there, uh, it wouldn't look quite right, and I wanted the station looking right for the next piece, which was, of course, the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery with the Z-1 Truss and PMA-3. And so here we go with Discovery's launch. And again, critical here is making sure that our inclination with respect to the station is minimal so that the space shuttle does not have to use much Delta V to rendezvous. And in that case, it'll have enough to get back without refueling, right? Uh, one of the inaccuracies I had in my previous attempt to build the International Space Station was that we needed to send refuelers up for the space shuttle so that it could get back home. Anyway, uh, booster separation coming up here. Everything looking good. In this case, the Z1 truss and PMA3 aren't exactly the heaviest payload that the shuttle ever carries to the station, so it's a good time to um, try and make an attempt to bring it back without refueling it. So it rolls over. The mass of the Z1 truss and PMA3, I think, were 8.8 .8 tons or something like that. I think that might have been just for the Z1 truss. I don't know about the mass of the PMA3. But that's fairly light compared to the next payload that we'll have to launch on a space shuttle, which is on Endeavour, the P-6 truss and slow arrays are 15.8 tons. So that'll be much harder to uh, get to the station without uh, needing some fuel help if we can't do it here. But you can see, relative inclination is pretty darn good as far as the station is concerned. So we, we, need, uh, we still need a correction. It would be great if we just didn't have to make a correction. That would be spectacular. But approaching the station here with the payload in the bay, you can see that we still have 470 meters per second. And we need 400 to get back after we attach the payload to the station. So we probably have more than what's being indicated there without the payload. So we're pretty good. It's a pretty good rendezvous so far. You may notice that I've put the payload forward in the bay on this one, and that's because of the docking port arrangements and how I had to get the payload out of the bay. I tried to think ahead about that. Of course, the Canada Arm can reach the payloads forward in the bay much easier than they can those in the rear of the bay, and so that was a consideration. So here we are, uh, docking. Alignment is always a little bit tricky with the shuttle. It's much bigger than the rest of the station at this point. And so, delicate sort of maneuver. And I decided to make this the concluding event to this particular live stream because we had done a lot of dockings and I didn't feel like I was ready to try and use the cannon arm to manipulate the payload at this stage. 
Uh, that always takes a little bit of thinking and care and all that, which uh, I was not prepared to do after streaming for hours and hours. And it was getting a little bit hot, so... Yep, anyway, we have docked the shuttle to the space station, and next time we will take care of that payload attaching the new Z1 truss onto the station, hopefully, and then also the PMA-3. But until then, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.